Welcome to Born or Made, the podcast that dives deep into the heart of success and identity. Are the traits that define us as leaders ingrained from birth, or are they carved out throughout our experiences? Join your host, Anne Marie LaTulip, as we ask these questions to some of the most insightful and inspiring entrepreneurs of our time. Each episode, we explore their journeys, the decisions that shaped them, and how they've molded their own paths to success. So whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, a seasoned business owner, or simply curious about the interplay between nature and nurture in professional growth, you're in the right place. Get ready for compelling stories, transformative insights, and a new perspective on what it really takes to make it in the world of entrepreneurship. Hey there, and welcome back to the Born or Made podcast. I am your host, Anne-Marie Latulip, and with me today, I have the wonderful Jen Dice. Jen is a marketing coach who leverages human design through content strategy. She works with women in business who are leveling up their message and content to better attract and convert with their ideal clients. Jen, welcome. Yes, thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, yeah and I'm excited to hear about what you're doing because it's, it sounds like you're doing something pretty interesting and I don't know much about it, so I'm so excited to dive in. But before we do, I, can you just take a minute? I know m- more about you than probably maybe some of my listeners. So will mm-hmm. you take a few minutes and, and explain what you're doing and how you got to where you are? Sure. So like you mentioned before, I really work heavily more in content creation, um, content strategy and marketing. And I have leveraged human design. That's been a piece that's come that I stumbled upon on my journey. So what I'm doing now with clients is just really helping them to show up in, in a way that works for them, feels aligned to them with content, working on their content creation process, their content strategy and their messaging so that they're able to put out more of their authentic selves into their marketing channels to better connect with their ideal clients. So that's what I'm doing now. But I guess if you want to rewind a little bit, I came into the online space originally. um, My business got off the ground in 2020, and it was a Pinterest marketing agency that I grew um, out of the need to be home with my kids, I was working in the healthcare setting. So I was a physical therapist for 13 years before transitioning into an online business. So I had more freedom. So content and strategy and that whole marketing, I've loved like diving into like the customer journey, the marketing journey from start to end. So Pinterest is more of, you know, people searching SEO search engine and how that journey looks. And I got to a point where I grew that business enough that um, I was looking at a fork in the road of, do I scale this into a full-fledged agency or is my heart calling me somewhere else? And that's kind of where I shifted from done for you in the Pinterest world into more of the strategy and the coaching. And I initially started with Pinterest, but expanded And along the way, I had stumbled across human design and had been just diving, went down the rabbit hole myself, dove into it, experimented with it and played with it. But it also was very instrumental in helping me, helping to, helping me to guide myself in making that pivotal decision and what I'm meant to do and what's more in alignment for me for the work that I'm doing today. So that's just a bird's eye view of the last (laughs) maybe four years or so. Okay. Wow. So from physical therapist mm-hmm. to um, entrepreneur, right? A, a yeah. Online business owner. So what was that transition like? I And you said it was 2020. So I'm guessing because of COVID, when everything shut down, you weren't able to go to the, the to your work anymore. So that was how that started. So what was that transition like? That So that was a transition that was a long time in the making. I think um, I have two girls and when I became a mom, that that kind of nagging in the back of my mind of wanting to be home. I always thought I was going to be this career career driven, you know, I'm going to be working all the time. And I was going to, if I had kids, I'd be the career mom. And when my oldest was born, I just started that feeling of, you know, wanting to be home. That desire was cut, that seed was kind of planted. And I had done a lot of searching, a lot of researching. I had done some blogging, played around with that. I had, um, you know, looked at different ways to make money. So I 
stepped into like a VA program and this was like 2018. So my LLC has actually been on file since like 2018, but I was in this shuffle of one foot in one foot out yeah. leaving because, you know, in the years prior to 2020, it was still so easier, so much easier to, you know, if we needed to an extra income coming in, it was so much easier to just pick up overtime. Yeah, and to put the business on the shelf. And so I was back and forth for a couple of years and it was, um, it was in early 2020 that all of like all of the, everything shifted, obviously yeah, right. my two kids by then. And yeah, they were sent home and I had, I had been working on the transition to get out of my, um, nine to five just to be home with them, but I hadn't had the business piece figured out yet, but I had slowly been transitioning from full-time to part-time to when 2020 happened, I was doing more on-call work. So I, I had a little cushion to be able to be there when they shut schools down and the kids came home. And, um, but even that, I was like, that was kind of the fire that was lit yeah. underneath me of like, this is, this just isn't okay anymore. I, I need to be here. I want to be here. And it was, that's when I was able to step out and into my business. It was still very uncomfortable because I was always known for, I'm a physical therapist. So that's what my family and friends knew me as. So this whole idea of transitioning into an online business or entrepreneur was so scary. And to the point where I didn't tell any of my friends or family, my husband, obviously, yeah, but yeah. my mom, my parent, like nobody knew about this business until I had built it to a point at the end of 2020 that I was leaving that job. And wow. It was, yeah, it was, so it was, it was a hard, it wasn't the easiest transition to make, but it was the best transition I've ever made. Yeah. So you definitely don't have any regrets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. not at all. That's awesome. So then speaking to the name of the show and the idea that we talk about, are we born or made? Would you yeah. consider yourself to have been made or do you feel you were born with those entrepreneurial thoughts? I think it's always been there. I yeah? think, yeah, I think it's always been there. I, I, looking back at my own story, I, the career path, I took the actions and did the things to check the boxes yeah. To stay on the path that, you know, my parents expected you to go to college, you get a degree, you get a career, you get yep. married, you have, so it was check, check, check. But I got into the career itself and it's, it's like you wake up one day and you're like, this can't be it. Yeah. Like there's gotta be more. So I think that being born with it, it's always been a part of me and I just wasn't ever brave enough to step into it. Yeah. And, and I think another thing too, and I, I say this a lot is that, I don't think it's, it could be now because it's so much easier for young people to start their own businesses online. But back when I was, I don't know how old you are, but back when I was yeah. young, there was no talk of starting your own business or being an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. It was exactly what you just said, you know, graduate, go to college, get a job. Like yeah. there was no, it wasn't fostered at all that idea. And so that probably had that been the case for you, that might've been different. You know, maybe you mm -hmm. would have started something sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would. Yeah. So did you ever do any of those typical uh, making money things when you're a kid, like lemonade stand or uh, like having a selling neighbors, the your rocks that you find at the beach? <laughs> I always had those ideas, but we never, yeah, we never had the stand or the selling things. But I know when I, when, when I was playing, like as a kid, I would play like I was starting up a store or I'd play uh -huh. like we were sound like I would play the entrepreneurial yep. with my horses or Barbies or ponies or whatever I was playing. With. <laughs> That's funny. I, I remember playing store too, that I hadn't thought yeah. about that in years. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so funny. Yeah. Yep. And then, so let's pivot a minute. Cause I want to go yeah. back to what you said about, um, human design that, mm -hmm. that seems to be a big talk topic right now. And I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a hundred percent certain what it really means. So can you explain that? Oh yeah. 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 So <laughs> I know it's relatively new for a lot of people and it's, it's gaining in, I guess, just awareness. But yeah. so if I like to s equate it to, if you're familiar with, um, other personality tests, like the Enneagram, mm -hmm. Myers-Briggs disc mm -hmm. assessment. So those are all tests that are designed to help you just understand yourself a little bit better, understand your personality and how you're, you know, how you're wired to connect with other people and handle different situations, things like that. So it's yeah. just, those are ways to just understand yourself a, li a little deeper level. 
human design is very similar in that it really helps you understand just at a basic level what your unique strengths, talents, and gifts are, like that you were literally born with. Um, and it's based on, instead of answering a set of questions, it's based on um, your birth information. So with human design, astrology is a piece of it. Okay. Um, the chakra system is a piece of it. Um, the Chinese um, I Ching and the Kabbalah, they're all together um, a piece of what human design is. And you, un you get your human design type and your definition and those key strengths and talents based on the exact um, birth date, place, and time and moment of your birth. Um, and so that just, it's a little bit less, it's a little bit, it's different where you're not answering a set of questions where I know sometimes you take the Enneagram and your number can change or yeah. the assessment, it, the results can change. So this is, you you do plug in your birth information and it, it will tell you based on that data, how astrologically things were lined up, which cues in just the different things that were activated in your chart at that specific moment in time. And then that gives you some of these strengths that a lot of them, some of them you're consciously aware of, you already, you already have. And then it also shines a light on some of the innate strengths and talents that you were born with that you might not be aware of, but maybe other people already see in you. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the process like? You said chart. So I'm guessing you, mm -hmm. you create a chart for somebody or how, what else goes into that process? Yeah. So it's super easy. If you want to know like what, what your human design type is, there's, there's five different human design types. Um, and the easiest way is to go online. There's free software. You can just go in and you can enter your name, your birth date, where you were born, and then your birth time. And it will give you a chart. So mybodygraph.com is a really simple, easy, free um, uh, software to use. Okay. It will give you a kind of a, a chart that looks like a, a person and it's got different shapes and different lines and different numbers and symbols. Some people get a little bit um, overwhelmed by the chart itself, but with that software, it will give you a summary of like, this is your human design type. Um, this is, you know, your like based on your type, this is your strategy for, you know, interacting with the world around you. And then some other pieces that go with that, it kind of breaks it down a little bit. So I'd say if, if you check it out and you look at your chart, um, and you get a little overwhelmed. I would start with the summary just to figure out what that type is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first. Yeah. Okay. Now, how did you get involved with this? So you said first yeah. earlier, you said you had a Pinterest. Uh, yes. right. Mm -hmm. So you were helping mm -hmm. people grow their Pinterest page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their Pinterest accounts getting, yeah, I was helping with growing their Pinterest accounts, but more so tra it's lead generation traffic to their websites, to their funnels gotcha. um, okay. was a part of that. So very, very marketing focused. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how did it change? How did you make that transition from Pinterest to human design? I'm really curious. Yeah. yeah. So I was actually in a program at the time and that inside that program, she had a module that was just de designed to help you understand yourself a little bit more. And okay. so the Myers-Briggs was in there. Um, Enneagram was in there. I think uh, there was a money assessment test and then human design was also in there. So it was a bunch of tests and I went through all of them. But when I landed on human design, I just got super curious and never seen something like that. I've heard of the other types of tests, but yeah. This one, I was like, so what does this mean? So I just got curious and I started just looking things up. I started YouTubing things. I started going down the rabbit hole just to understand what it meant. Because in this program, it was like, take the information that you're getting and figure out like how to apply it to like your, your, your business and your, you know, how you're growing your business. And just so that we could create more alignment because th this mentor I was working with at the time was very focused on creating alignment just across the board with the businesses that we were building. Okay. And so that was the lens in which I was working on applying it to. And so I, I think I just kept getting more and more curious until I decided that as I was making that shift and that pivot from Pinterest, from Pinterest into more of the strategy and human design that this is super powerful and it's been super helpful for me to understand myself better. 
and it, it, it kind of helped shine a light on, you know, you question yourself when you're facing a decision, you're mm-hmm. like, should I do this? Should I do that? What does so-and-so say? What does this other person say? But it really helps you figure out how you're designed to make those decisions and take the path that's most aligned to you. So that was something that was so powerful for me. Right. Yeah. As I made that shift, it was like, this has to be a part of it. Like everybody's doing, you can see, you can get marketing strategy, you can get content strategy everywhere. Um, You can get human design readings, you know, from other places too, but I, nobody is putting the two together. You can get human design readings and get more information on your human design, but I couldn't find much in the way of anybody teaching how to apply it to like business and marketing and things like that. Okay. So, so you work one-on-one with people? Is that? Yes. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. Right now I'm mostly one-on-one. I do um, content strategy sessions with my clients and help them figure out like their content creation and their messaging and showing up with um, authenticity and confidence. That's so interesting. Had you been previously into astrology or anything like that before? Or? I had heard of, like, I had been always, my, I say my curiosity and my interest has always been piqued by astrology. Um, you know, I, I follow some people that are into it and I pay attention to like the moon. So like um, paying attention like to the moon cycles, things like that was always, was interesting to me as well. And so that's why when I landed on this, it was like, this just, I'm not sure what I have here, but yeah. I feel like this is something that I definitely need to continue to explore. Yeah, right. And you mentioned the moon. Um, I saw on your website a, a certification in, what is yeah. it, moonology? Moonology, yes. Yeah, can so you yeah. That? yeah, that was a part of the process too. So I had found human design first and I had already at that point made the decision to start shifting and initially starting just with human design readings on the side of what I was doing with Pinterest. Um, and then I had also followed, um, I think her, her name's Yasmin Bolin. She's a creator of Moonology. So I had been listening to her. Um, and the moon piece of it comes into play because the moon is a part of astrology. It does have a place in your human design chart. Um, and not only as you're going through like the cycles of the moon, new moon to full moon, things like that, yeah. the energy can shift. Okay. From a human design perspective, the moon transits through the different gates in your human design chart and can cause different ebbs and flows in your energy throughout the lunar cycle. So, and as a matter of fact, like if you are a reflector in the human design space as your human design type, reflectors very much lean into the lunar cycle and their energy shifts and changes through that lunar cycle as a means for them to make aligned decisions um, through human design. So that's how those two pieces kind of came together. That That's so interesting. What are the, you said there's how many types of human design? Did you say four? Mm-hmm. Five. Five. Can, yeah. you, can yeah. you tell us what they are? Yeah. So um, you're either going to be a generator, um, a manifesting generator, a reflector, a projector, or a manifester. Um, and I'll say About 70% of the population is either a generator or a manifesting generator. Um, Manifestors make up about 9 or 10% of the population. Projectors make up about 20% of the population. And reflectors are the rarest at about 1% of the population. So, Wow. What are you? What is your human design? I'm I'm a generator. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's tying into learning more about, like, what does that mean? What is, like, how am I designed to make decisions? Like based on the different energy that I have in, in my chart, what's, what's activated in my chart. How can I lean into that a little bit more? Things like that. Okay. Now, how old are your girls? You said you have two. Yeah. Yeah. So my oldest is 13 and my youngest is 10. She just turned 10. So, okay. So, well, the 10 year old is probably a little young, but is your 13 year old into this kind of thing too? Are you teaching her about, about that or? Um, a little bit. Um, I, I think the biggest education I've gotten from this with my kids is looking at their charts and understanding yeah. how, when I approach them, why they might be so different and react to things or, um, process things differently. So like my oldest, is 13 so she's a teenager but she's also a projector and understanding me as a generator how she where she's a little bit more open in her chart 
um, how she tends to pick up, like for an example, she's open in one of her emotional centers in her church. She's open there. So she picks up all the emotions from the world around her. So the more I regulate my emotions as I'm approaching her, talking to her through things and, and not get, let my emotions get out. Cause I have, I have emo an emotional center that's defined. She can kind of, she doesn't, that doesn't affect her as much versus my little one who is also defined and has a big emotional wave. I understand that when she's frustrated with something or she's processing something, she needs a little bit more space and she's going to go through these highs and lows with her emotions. So it's more of an education of how to best approach each kid individually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's my oldest sees a little bit more of like the charts and like things that I might be prepping for, for clients, things like that. So, so you had said this earlier, I just want to go back to it just for a minute. Mm -hmm. This is something that can never change, right? Because it's all based on when and where you were born. Mm -hmm. So there's no way to like lean one way and then lean the, the next way some days. It de well, and it that depends too on how you're defined in your chart too as well. Like oh, okay. you can be, yeah. So your type is not going to change. So you could be a manifesting generator and that type won't change. But I have clients where they are a manifesting generator, which based on human design, you know, education and and knowledge would would indicate that they would lean more into being that generator side of their energy. But I have some clients where they have certain channels that are activated in their chart, certain, I guess, variations as a manifesting generator that they can lean a little bit more into the manifester energy that they have. Okay. And sometimes to some degree, especially if we're talking content creation and posting content, publishing, showing up, they've been downplaying some of the energy that they actually naturally have. So, oh, wow. That yeah. is so, so cool. <laughs> It's just stuff I, I would never have thought, you know, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. I'm into like my Zodiac sign and, and that kind of thing, yeah. you know, so that, that is, that's really cool. So how does that work when you apply it to, um, to content creation, for example, is it just, um, posting something that doesn't feel, I don't know, explain that a little bit. I'm trying to put words to it, yeah. but posting as yeah. your authentic self, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say a lot of the clients that come to me before we start working together is one of their biggest problems or challenges that they are coming up against is not either not knowing what they should or shouldn't be saying or posting on social media, or um, they aren't seeing the right types of clients showing up on the back end of their marketing. So it's either this question of, they're not sure what to say, or they feel resistance when they go to hit publish. Some of them are, some of my clients have created content, but they just aren't putting it out there. Um, and usually it's, it's a matter of looking at where they're feeling those blocks or challenges or resistance is coming from having them kind of express what they're feeling when it's, when it's, when they're looking at their content or, or showing up consistently. Um, and so when we're looking at their human design chart, um, some of my clients are given certain processes, systems. This is how to follow these X, Y, Z steps to create content and you'll have success. Like just follow the checklist. And I have some clients that um, they just aren't designed to do things that way. They're not designed to show up um, consistently every day. So it's like figuring out a process that's going to allow them to capture their creativity, but also not feel so contained in a, like, for example, my manifesting generator clients, many of them just do not like having to feel like they have to be somewhere at a certain time every single day or do be told that they have to do something or feel confined or in, put in a box that this is what I have to do every single day. Um, some of them tolerate it. They just feel the frustration and they keep keep showing up. But others, they just, they'll show up consistently for a period of time. And then they they get so burnt out that they're just like, I can't do this. And so it's this roller coaster effect. Yeah. So it's figuring out how you're designed to show up first. And then looking more at the nuances in their chart, it's figuring out what they are, what they're designed to put out to the world and how they're designed to step into um, 
content that's going to best draw in their people. So for example, if you're like more of a generator showing up and stepping into this energy of excitement and talking about the things that you're excited about in your business and really showing up in that energy is number one, going to help light them up and excite them about what they're creating, but also start to excite their audience and bring their audience to them. Um, and with my manifesting generator clients, again, like I said too before, it's sometimes they're putting things out there, but they're not saying what they really want to say because they don't think they should be saying that. Or somebody told them, don't say that, or they're filtering themselves when based on their design, they're really designed to say what they want to say when they want to say it, how they want to say it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was a lot. Sorry. No, no, I, I love it. The one that you were talking about before, I forget which one you said, was it the manifest, the manifester or that feels confined, doesn't want to be told where to go, where to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Manifester. Manifesting generator and uh, manifester too. Yep. That would be me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. That, that's so cool. So are your clients mainly like just purely content creators, like bloggers, or do you have some clients that are, you know, in, in marketing a, a product or service? Yeah. Most of my clients are um, entrepreneurs, business owners. So they are coaches, consultants, service providers, creatives, thing, they, that's typically who I'm talking to. And they, they just, they have a business and they're trying to get the right messaging out there yeah. to their, to their audience. To attract your, your people, right? Yes. To attract yeah. your, your ideal. Cause I'm in that world too. I'm a, I build funnels, but I'm all in that attractive character yes. in marketing and repelling those who you don't want to work mm -hmm. with as well. Right. So that, yeah. so that really works together. How I, I can see how that's such a great niche that you've got because mm -hmm. that's so important. And that's probably something that a lot of people don't realize can help them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they don't realize that, you know, maybe they're putting content out there, maybe they're creating things, but there's this underlying level of frustration or, they feel kind of bitter about or resentful to their marketing, yeah. but they're just doing it anyway. So this kind of, it's human design really helps you, gives you that permission to do things maybe out of the box in an out of the box kind of way yeah. that in a way that works for you. To be without, your authentic self. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, that's, that's so cool. But I want to, I want to pivot a minute and go back. Yeah. So prior to this, you mentioned that you were a physical therapist, which mm -hmm. is so cool. That must have been a very rewarding job, I would imagine. But what was it that made you go into physical therapy? So that's, I, I, I love working with people. Um, and I actually was at the, a crossroads too in college where I was looking at, um, I had gone through a health sciences major because I love science. I love learning yeah. about different sciences. I love learning about the human body. I loved how understanding how things worked. But I was also looking at going the route of physical therapist um, and also looking at going the route of um, veterinary medicine. So it was like, oh. still too, like it's very science based but, and very, um, but very different in the different levels of ways of schooling and what you're learning. But ultimately with the physical therapy, um, I, I'm, I'm not one that has a story of like, I hurt or I had an injury and then my physical therapist helped heal me and get me stronger again. Um, it was more of, I'm this, this is intriguing to me. This is something I want to learn more about. So I'm going to do, go do some shadowing. So die again, following that, that nudge of like, this seems more exciting. This is something I want to learn more about. And I did some shadowing, some learning, figuring out what, what, you know, it would look like on the flip side of what, once I got out of school and what, um, serving the different patients through the different, maybe different areas of physical therapy would look like. And one of the things that I loved about it was that you could work in a ton of different settings as a therapist. You could work not just in an outpatient clinic. Um, yeah. I actually did that. I did work in an outpatient clinic for a few years when I first graduated, but I ultimately ended up working in the hospital, which was, I never would have seen that as a place where I thrive, but I loved working with, um, it was a acute care hospital. So working with patients that were really needed to get back home 
yeah. really needed to, you know, take their first steps. I worked a little bit in pediatrics, um, outpatient pediatrics as well. So truly really those, those ages at the either end of the spectrum where with the pediatrics, you're really working on, you know, how can, you know, we can help with walking better. How can we help this, these kids take their first steps or roll over or get strong enough to do certain things, um, at home. And same thing with the acute care side. It was, you know, how can I help this patient get back home to the life that she truly wants to live with the support that she needs? Um, so yeah. is that was one big thing was just not being, feeling like um, you were in going to be in one type of a situation for work forever. You could really expand and work in all these different settings. Yeah. And that must have been... Uh, did you work with people that maybe were in a life-changing accident and had to be re rehabilitated? And was that something that you did as part of being in the hospital? Um, a little bit. I think if they needed, yeah, more of the acute rehab, um, like a traumatic brain injury or spinal cord injuries, yeah. um, we we didn't necessarily see those patients, but we did see patients that, you know, they they maybe were in an accident, they had a fracture or they fell in. They really just wanted to get back home. Yeah. Like, so. That's what, yeah. That's what I was going to say, because do, you, you must have to really be able to handle like their emotions. I would think, yeah. you know, um, cause my brother has cerebral palsy. So he's mm -hmm. seen quite a few physical therapists in his, yes. in his life. And, um, they've always just been so good with him. I think for them, I don't know, no, he, he's ever had a bad one, but they were always just so good and not only doing the physical therapy but just support yeah know, emotional support almost yeah yeah so that that must have been rewarding yeah it was definitely something that I loved about about working as a therapist is you know being a part of that support being a part of helping those patients on their journey to help them get to their goals and like I said many of them it was just they wanted to for the, the moms and the kids I was working with just to help them take their first couple of steps. Yeah. Um, and then even that translated into the hospital of after somebody had an accident and they fractured a hip or something and were coming out of surgery, it's helping them take their first steps towards yeah. getting back home. That's awesome. And you said that uh, being a vet was also a contender for a career. Yeah. Are you an animal lover? I, I um yeah we that was something I think growing up too I always thought I would go into veterinary medicine and my youngest even keeps saying she wants to be a vet when she gets bigger because she loves animals too um so she wants to be I think she wants to be a, a horse we have a horse so I think she wants to work with large animals you have a so, horse yeah that's so cool yeah. where do you live um so I'm in Michigan um oh, I don't have it here it's it's at a, a in a nice, nice big facility where I can go visit and oh, that's go out awesome. there and stuff. But yeah, we've I've been into horses. Oh gosh, I've since my little pony days. I mean, when I was six <laughs> years old, I've told my parents I want a horse, and oh, got that's one so when cool. I was twenty. So. What what what's your horse's name? Um, her name is Reba. So she's a red um chestnut mare. I've had oh. her for sixteen years. So oh. yeah, she's, she's 20 years old right now. And so she's been my, uh, I've shown her, ridden her. She's taught me a lot. So now my kids are mostly the ones that are learning like a little bit more of horses and riding with her. Wow. How, how long do horses usually live? What's their lifespan? They can live into their thirties, just depending really? on how, how well they're doing. Um, you know, she's 20, so I know she's, she's. Kind of getting close to retire. I mean, she's sort of semi-retired because she's just my kids are just really the ones that are hanging out with her. Oh, um, so yeah, they can. I've I, I used to work at a therapeutic riding center, and we'd had horses there that were like in their thirties. Really, I had no so idea long. they lived that long. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. A horse. Yeah. So what yeah. part of Michigan are you in? I have family out there. I'm curious. Oh, you do? Yeah. 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 We're in, um, so if you know where Lansing is, it's kind of a, the capital and then it's middle of the state. So like <laughs> then, here? <laughs> yeah. And then if you go towards the pinky straight West, yes. Okay. Like, like I'm trying to figure out 
yeah because the mirror it's weird for anyone that's listening we're just doing the, the, Michi the michigan the michigan thumb so like if <laughs> lansing's like in the center yeah there's another city grand rapids that's west of lansing and then we're like west over here oh so, so you're this like is lake michigan over here mm -hmm. um okay. and then if it's not backwards <laughs> <laughs> this is like Detroit's like over here yeah yeah so yeah we're kind of so you're blessed. right across the state okay my yeah. relatives are in I think if they're outside of Detroit Brooklyn I think it's okay I think I've yeah heard that. yeah okay. yeah well so um cold winters for you up there <laughs> it is yeah we're just coming out of winter it's May what it's just we're just getting like regular 70 degrees up here so. I know I'm in Boston so I yeah I hear you it's it's 70 degrees outside today too so okay. finally <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway I want to talk more about uh you had said about the that your daughter wants to be a horse vet we got I kind of drove you down that yeah. tangent there <laughs> um but, but that is so cool I in terms of being a vet, did you learn much about um, how to specialize? Would you specialize in one thing, like a horse vet? Is that its own thing? Or yeah, really? yeah. Because I think from what the research that I did, because I did some, I did research on that when I was in college, and I shadowed um, a couple of veterinarians. And I, having a horse, I know what the vets do when they're yeah. out at the barn. But um, so with that, I think you go through four. It's a four years of vet school. So you go through like your graduate vet school, but I think as a part of that, you can specialize in large animals or wow. like the traditional small animals, like dogs and cats and some yeah. of the smaller animals. And I even think I did some shadowing at the, at the local zoo that we have years ago, and you can specialize in like wildlife too, um, oh. for veterinary medicine. So I was like, I was looking at all of it, but yeah. I know that vet school was a, a four year program. And then I, beyond that, I don't know what the steps would be for if like you really wanted, really wanted to get into like equine medicine or really wanted to get into wildlife medicine. I did. I wanted to be a vet at one point in my oh, life. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And I, I'll tell you a funny story. I actually had a job at a vet's office I was you know the person that comes in and holds the dog and the assistant mm -hmm. I guess you would call it I don't know yeah um but yeah I actually got fired from that job because I cried when uh somebody had to put their dog down Aww. and I, and I had to hold the dog well, well and I cried more than the dog's owner yeah so Aww. the vet pulled me inside and said, this probably isn't the job for you <laughs> yeah oh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm an animal lover like crazy mm -hmm. or I have two dogs and uh yeah they're awesome mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have pets yeah. now other than your horse um we've had dogs we don't have any pets at the moment so yeah I think we've been really busy with the horse and everything yeah. Uh, yeah. when we had dogs the dogs would come out to come out out and around with us and everything but how far away is she the horse your horse um, she's about an hour away from where we're at. And I say that I always have to explain this because <laughs> okay. we do have boarding facilities like closer, but, um, she's at a, a place where <clears throat> I worked with a horse trainer for many years when I first got her. Cause I was showing a lot when I was younger. Um, and when she was younger and that's just, that kind of became her home. And I did try to bring her closer to home, but, um, not that the facilities around here were aren't great or anything but it just she does better where she's at right now I know that she likes the facility the way they take care of the horses there um I still they they help exercise her too for me now um cool. so the way they approach her and they take care of her um I I, I can't really find that anywhere else so I, I just keep her there they and we kind of have our own little family of like other barn family out there it's just we're the ones that drive a little bit further oh <laughs> do horses have personalities like oh yeah do they really oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so cool we, like because I know my dogs I don't even this is so it's gonna sound crazy but I don't even think of them as dogs because they have such <laughs> strong personalities so yeah. how do, what's her personality like as a horse like what kind of funny things do they do can you talk about that for a second she, oh yeah she sticks her <laughs> tongue out so this is for, just a part like when she is happy or she's relaxed she just she sticks her tongue out and it just hangs out like the side of her mouth and <laughs> when my sometimes my kids will show her and they'll take her into like we call a showmanship class so they're leading her around and they're setting her up and yeah 
she doesn't do it with me, but when they walk her out and they set her up, she'll like stick her tongue out with the judge <laughs> and stuff. And, you know, that's just been a, a little part of her personality that people notice, but it's, it's just a part of her. And I noticed too, like they pick up their, so horses are very empathic. They, one of the things that you learn very quickly is that they pick up on your emotions. They pick up on how you're feeling. Really? Um, yeah. It was so energy. So they, she's very, very intuitive where if one of my kids has a hold of her and is walking her and is like, maybe they'll take her out from the barn and into the arena to, cause they like to lead her around. Yeah. She behaves like she's very, she knows that there's a small person attached to the other end of the lead rope that has a hold of her versus not that she would act up or anything with, with an adult, but she's, you can just tell she shifts and how she responds when one of my kids is working with her or on her, um, versus yeah. anybody else. She just takes that little extra, uh, like calmness or care when she knows that there's a kid around her or with her, but, and then maybe that's because my kids were raised around her. So she's seen them toddle around the barn and yeah. So yeah. Wow. That is fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's a horse's design. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so that brings it back. Cause we're almost at the end here, but at the yeah. end of every interview, I like to just yeah. fire off a few random questions to mm -hmm. get to be better. Okay. So first one is if you had the opportunity, would you go to space and walk on the moon? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I think I'm, I might, I might not do that. I don't know. I think I I'd have. let other people go first. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would. No, thank you. Yeah. I'll stay right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then kind of where I'm thinking. Yeah. Right. And then if you had the ability to have dinner with any one person alive or dead, who would it be? Oh, goodness. This one I have, I don't know. I think if I had an opportunity to sit down and just have a conversation with anybody, it would be my grand, my great grandmother. So my mom's grandmother who passed away way away before I was born just to under, I think more to understand a little bit of our family history and That's um, a good one. My, my mom's side of the family. Yeah. Yeah. That would probably be the person I would want to sit and chat with. That's awesome. I love that. And then what book has inspired you? most in your life not necessarily a business book but any book any book um, um i would say anything i've read related to human design has been extremely in instrumental um right now i'm reading atomic habits by oh, james yeah. clear and i've read that one a couple times before um and I keep seeing it popping up on maybe it's Instagram where other people are reading it too. So I was like, maybe it's a great book. I, I, it's a good book. So that one's yeah. been, um, one of my favorites because I've read it a few times before. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, what's hmm. next for you, Jen? Do you have anything exciting coming up? Oh, business or personal or well, both? Either one. I was either one business, but if there's something exciting that's personal, yeah. That you want to share? Oh okay. yeah, a little bit. Well, so business wise, <laughs> uh, I think excitement is just, um, I think honing in a little bit more on the clients that I have and continuing to expand the ways that I can serve them and help, help them with their mission and showing up through their content and their messaging. So I think, and actually from a business perspective, maybe sliding a little bit back into some of the content creation, a little bit of the, cause I, that's starting to become a theme where I can help them with the strategy and help them work on creating their content. But, um, I've already been getting hints at, you know, can you do this for like, so maybe diving a little bit more back into the agency route a little bit with content management, um, helping them with their copy, helping them with, um, some of their social media. So that's one thing. And then personal, it's almost summer. So like travel, our family does a lot with, uh, yeah, a lot with, um, going to different amusement parks. So we are very much a travel busy roller coaster riding family. Oh, so that, I love we, that. We've got trips already on the books for the holiday weekends and a big long trip in August. So how fun. 
that, that I love amusement parks. I'm like a little kid. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Is there one in Michigan? There's a big one in Michigan, isn't there? Um, there's a smaller one in Michigan. It's called Michigan's Adventure. And so we'll, we, we go to that one's like 30 minutes from us, but Cedar Point is a bigger one in Ohio. And that's, we, yeah. we do have multiple trips there planned this year. Yeah, I've never been there, but that's the one I was thinking of in my head. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, Jen. Well, yes. do you have a freebie for my audience? I think I read. I do. Yeah. So if you guys are curious about just like, what the heck is human design? How can I learn more about my chart and start applying it? Um, I do have a free HD start guide that's at jendice.co backslash HD start. And that will help you go to, will walk you through the process of going to the free software I mentioned, how to get your free chart, what to look for in the summary of that chart. And then I have a couple of free bonus videos in that freebie that will help kind of put some of those pieces together for you. Awesome. That's great. I'm going to go check it out myself. Yeah. I can't wait to learn more about my human design. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Jen. That, that, this was a great chat. Yes. Thank you so much, Amory. It was so much fun.